So I've got all the handles made, all ground up, ready to go. I've cut all the other pieces and now we've just got to put it all together. The flat bits with the holes in are stainless only because I had a piece of flat stainless the right width. Um, I've cut and drilled and tapped the nuts and the threads and all the little stops. So now what I'm going to do is uh, put the decoration into the nuts um, and then start putting it all together. So let's get over to the bandsaw. My handy on off switch. Right, what I'm going to do just cut some tiny little V's in here. I've been thinking about different ways of doing this and if I'd had a really sharp triangular file that might have been a more accurate way of doing it but I don't even own a triangular file of any description I, well I have I've got one but it is so blunt it's like well it's got no teeth on it whatsoever so it's absolutely pointless trying to use it so I thought I oh, know I'll do it with a bandsaw and so far it's working out quite well it's not the most accurate of ways of doing it but it's doing the job by the time it's all powder coated and cleaned up or cleaned up and powder coated I don't think you'll really notice see if you can see it a bit better now so I'm just putting a a straight cut in first to the depth I want and then just coming in from each side meeting at the bottom well that's the theory tidying it up That's it, really. So, nothing fancy. By the time they're all cleaned up, you'll never know the difference. They get better as you go along. It's, it becomes easier the more you do. Let me speed this a little bit up a bit get the idea of what I'm up to that's it, that's that lot done right, well these plates uh, they've got to have an offset on them, the top piece has got to be bent away so that I can get them far enough away from the door um, or the, the frame, sorry I've got to be careful not to damage the hole so I'm trying to hold it as far in as possible. I've just got a lump of old iron here and a biggish hammer. Just give it a belt. And you can see already that I've damaged that the hole on that one. I really should have hung it hung it out not quite so far. Have a little look. You'll see what I mean about the hole. That's what I'm trying to achieve, a bit of an offset, but so you can see it's dragged the hole. I suppose I could have put the holes in afterwards, but I thought it was going to be difficult to mark them where I wanted them. So I thought I'd put the holes in first. Which may have been a mistake, but hey ho. That's how we learn. Knock this one over as well. And so the, the the handles have got to get past the outer frame. So we need about a five mil offset because that's what the thickness of the frame is. You can see I pulled on that one as well. But again, never mind. Once it's all powder coated up, you probably won't even notice it. You probably won't even be able to see it by the time the handles across it. Could have uh, 
try to make a little some sort of a press tool up for the fly press to do these but I just thought this would be easier if I was doing hundreds then I might make up some sort of a tool but that one's that one's a bit be bit better it's pulled the hole a little bit but not much so what we've got to do now put the pins in and weld them all up so I'm just going to try and knock the pins into the holes these pins are again they're stainless but only again because I've got some quarter stainless rod kicking about um, not for any other reason I don't think that one's going in very straight no nope, it's not let's see if I can hold it a bit straighter with these things, that's got it I've made the, the hole relatively tight fit and I've countersunk the back of it so that's now flush but it has got a countersink that I can get some weld in that one's the one that hasn't been pulled quite so badly look at that, that just pops straight in, nice one trouble is when you've got fingers dropping it on the floor, fingers like pork sausages there's no point trying to hold these things I'm just going to bang my fingers another one in so let's go and put the get the welder on them and weld them in and then put the threads in so I'm going to tick these up um, I could use the MIG but I, I really want pra the practice with the TIG um, so although the, the MIG would do the job quite easily on this particular part of the process um, as I say I'm, I really want to get the practice as you can see I've caught the edge of that made a bit of a mess of the edge but again I don't think it will matter once it's cleaned up just going to put the thread in that hole, these are HT threads um, I don't know if it makes any difference I have got about six miles of quarter inch studding that I could use or six mil studding that I could use but I don't think studding is actually very high tensile um, and I think these could strip quite easily if they're just ordinary mild steel so I want to put some HT ones in just so that they're a little less susceptible to stripping because I think they will need adjusting um, once it's on site I don't quite know how they're going to do that with the powder coating on there without damaging it unless of course they adjust it all up they know the tolerances beforehand anyway that's up to them so just hit that with the flap disc take the lumps off the back of that and that'll do so we do the next one again I'm really starting to get the hang of this this TIG it's getting yourself in the right position where you're comfortable um, you know you're propped well and you can see for a start that's another good thing is you really need to be able to see what you're up to I don't know whether I'm going to get this whole job done with the TIG because I'm nearly out of gas so I'll have to take a trip to my supplier see if I can get myself some more gas, I'm going to get a bigger bottle this time I'm using a Hobby World small bottle at the moment but as I'm going to be using this much more I'm going to swap it for the big bottle so we've got them all done, I've put them all together, literally it was just drop the handles onto the plates screw the nuts on and just leave them loose enough so that they will turn so now we've got to see if we can weld them onto the frames and you've got to be careful when you're using the old uh, wire brush I've been pulling these out my arms all afternoon 
and they go in quite a long way, some of them. You have to be a little bit careful. Going home covered in little red dots. Hey ho! Right, so I've marked the frame in the centre of the upright and that's where it's going to go and you can now see why I need that offset because it's got to reach down at least 5mm to the frame now I'm going to put some shim in here as well because like I say I have no idea what sort of tolerances the powder coating is going to be you know how thick by the time it's on all of those edges on the handle, the frame, on the outside of the frame, the inside of the frame, the inside of the inner bit, inside of the out or outside of the inner bit, you know, it's gonna be like four or five, six maybe thicknesses or five yeah, probably five thicknesses of powder coat in there, or no, what will affect it? One at least two, three at least three layers of powder coating that's gonna affect that. Anyway, I'm gonna try and get a tack on each side so that I can take it apart and well not take it apart but you know get to it to weld right the way along it. Trying to get everything sorted, finding all my bits and pieces. And one thing I do keep forgetting is putting a blooming earth lead on. Right, here we go. No, I've forgotten the earth lead. What did I just say? It's a bugger, isn't it? How far? If I was welding on a steel bench, I would have just attached it to the bench. But I'm just using this little sort of wooden top workmate type bench um, because it's a nice low height, so that I can actually sit down, sitting on my little stool that I made. Much more comfortable. making sure that's all in the right places. Let's get a tack on this other side. I'm learning quite quickly to be um, ambidextrous with this uh, TIG. You're using it in your left hand and your right hand is it's quite useful. In some respects, I find it easier using it left-handed. I don't quite know why. Um, right, it's got a tack on there. We've got a little bit of play under the handle, which hopefully will be enough. I'm sure they'll be able to bend. You know the bracket a little bit if necessary if there's not enough play or if again there's too much play but I'd rather leave them a little bit there right I've opened the frame up so I can get to this bit without damaging the other part of the frame and I'm just going to put this bit of box section in the back of the frame just to stop any distortion because uh, this angle iron tends to pull like crazy when you weld it I'm just going to get one on the other side and uh, it's a bugger to straighten without damaging it especially as this frame's now got the door on it as well so i just put some Nibesi clamps on there brilliant clamps they are I'm just going to weld across there and hope it doesn't go anywhere get all my kit again I'm not really set up for using the TIG. It's taking a little bit more time to get myself organised. You know, with the MIG, I know what I'm up to, I know where everything is, and it's all set. At least I got the earth clamp on this time. see what that looks like. Well it ain't pretty but it's on. If 
fact, I might run another little world along there just to fill it up a bit because there's I want to try and blend these in to the framework quite nicely. I don't want too much of a an obvious um, step. I don't know, it might be alright that one. Can't really see from here and I can't remember when I did it. No, it's obviously alright because I'm taking the clamps off. Let's have a little look along it, see if that kept it straight. Put my eye along it. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> cool. Right, so I've got to get to the back of it now. So I'm going to turn it all upside down. Just flip it over. Just open it up. That will hold itself up. I'm going to try and put that bit of bar in. I can't remember which way. Where's the best place to put it? To uh, stop it going anywhere, but let's put it back under there, I think. I think what I'm going to have to do is lay this down to get the clamps on there. You can almost see my brain working, can't you? Trying to figure this out. It's like a blooming Rubik's Cube trying to work it out. I haven't got enough hands. Oh dear. That's painful to watch. Right, I'm getting there. That's the trouble with one off jobs. You um have to work everything out for the first time. Once you've done you know the first couple, it all becomes Sort of second nature, and you just do it, and it's put the clamp on, and you you sort of figure out the best ways of doing things. That's why I always forget uh, on one-off jobs that they're going to take that much longer, and you need to price accordingly. And once you've done it half a dozen times, it's a piece of cake. Anyway, we'll get there. I'm beginning to sort of re not regret but I'm getting fed up with this job I've been on this for weeks um, here and there because I just do an hour here and an hour there in between the horses you get stuck in for a couple of hours just getting really into it and you have to pack up but today I've actually come in this is Saturday come in for that oh stuck oh dear Dear oh dear, stuck my rod on and my tungsten. Never mind. Um, yeah, I've come in on Saturday to just. It's quiet, there's no one in the yard. I can just get stuck in and. I haven't got the dog with me, Rachel's got Ralph. So I can just concentrate and try and get this lot finished, which is the ob objective for the day. Right. I think that's sort of got that. Let it cool down a little bit. And there we go. It's on. That's it, focus. You can see I've sort of given it a bit of a clean up. Kind a frame. We'll pass it and it works. There's a little bit of play in there you can see for the powder coating. With any luck, once I've um, put this bit on, that will be this one done. Now this is just to hold the window open when it's open. There's a uh, sort of a hook 
it's going to go on there and then when it's open there's a hook that will go in and hold the window open um, I've yet to make them that will be the third part of this sort of series of window videos um, that's the last bit to do I've got three no six stays to make um, and they they're out of square and they've got a little double twist in the middle of them um, so with any luck that will be the the last bit if I can get these finished today oh I've forgotten that blasted clamp again oh, I need to write in big letters on this uh, bench put the clamp on alright try again because every time you pull the trigger I'm losing gas and I'm nearly out at the best of, nearly out already so I really need to remember I suppose I could turn my post flow down a little bit just a second or so right, try and get myself comfortable then so I can see one thing I do like about this TIG welding you don't seem to get sunburnt like you do with the MIG and you don't get any of that splatter so you don't get the you know you don't get burnt with splatter and you don't have a, have a problem cleaning up the job you know, chiseling lumps of splatter off all over the place just tap that down a bit I'm going to hit that with the flat disc on the top I will go over that with the wire brush. All these, um, oh, I'm going to do it already. All these um, welds and joints, I go over with the flap disc. Then sometimes, depending on the joint, go over with a sand, little sanding disc. And then finally, with the wire brush, it just blends it all in a little bit better. The wire brush sort of takes the sharp edges off, makes it all look a little bit less fresh and brand new which is what I'm trying to, the desired effect I'm trying to achieve on this so it's, although it is brand new it doesn't look particularly brand new, forgotten the clamp again oh, right here we go and so the, the only downside with the wire brush is uh, you end up with it Ducking you all over. I've got it all in my chest, in my stomach, in my arms. But hey ho. I want to get my TIG finger on. Is that bit of framework's pretty hot. If you haven't heard about the TIG fingers, you want to go and see Jody over at WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. He sells them there, really good bits of... I think they're basically, I don't know what they are, as, no, it wouldn't be asbestos. They look a bit like fiberglass, the way they're woven. And you just slip them over your finger and they're like heat resistant. Really handy, I've got a couple of them. I ought to dig one out from somewhere and use it. Right, so, everything's cleaned up now. This is number one of six so the, this is the inner framework 25 by 25 by 5 angle it's going to have holes drilled into the framework when they work out where they need to go they're going to drill them before they have them powder coated but they've got the d dimensions for that then the inner frame is 20 by 20 by 3 which is the bit that that's attached to There's the little ring. Then the swing it around, the sort of like a cover frame that goes on the opposite side is 13 by 13 by 3 over the top. And the glazing is going to go on the inside of that, just inside there, onto that piece. So you won't see any of the inside here. 
I'm not sure what sort of glazing they're putting in. I think it's. Um, I don't like the hinges much. I would have made my own hinges, which would have sorted out the problem of uh, this framework not hitting the outer framework. I could have had it covering much better rather than leaving that gap all the way around the edge. But anyway, they supplied the hinges, that's what they wanted, so I'm going to do another one with my own hinges just as a sample and I'm hoping it will get over that problem anyway yeah I'm not sure what sort of glazing they're going to use I think it's going to be old-fashioned um, leaded lights I'm not sure because I don't even know where this is going I'll have to ask him anyway that's the first one done so five more to go and that'll be done for the day thanks for watching